Yes, the zombie killer is in the garage, having a little break, because we're doing something different. We gutted the underneath and pulled out the dual transfer cases. So no longer are we gonna run the dual transfer case setup with a 231 and a Dodge 205. So instead of doing that, we are going to put underneath it that. Yep, that's the Hero 2-speed 6x6 transfer case. It's got two rear outputs and, of course, one front output. Ain't it pretty? That's some gorgeous machine work right there. That is going to go up in there. Make it look easy. So, I'm just going right into the transmission there. There's Alex doing his thing. All right, we're almost there. So, it slid right in. No problem whatsoever. No, actually, not. Well, one of the bolt holes is slightly off. So, we had to tap and drill out a hole a little bit to get it to fit. But every other bolt fit up just perfect. And the Hero 6x6 transfer case is in the zombie killer yeah what do you have to say alex it's been a long waited <laughs> addition a waited addition <laughs> three, three years. years of hounding <laughs> yeah. installing the cable shifters shifters are all in you can see the linkage there and that's going back to the back of the beautiful transfer case that's heavy duty beefy trail worthy fab hero two speed six by six transfer case isn't that pretty okay shifters are in and so our transfer case is still on 433 to 1 and Alex is figuring out what our ultimate crawl ratio is and it is Gear low range 75.091. So we've done better than double our crawl ratio from before. Sweet! <laughs> That's Leaks. gonna make crawling up rocks real easy. Weeks better than a 47.5. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Awesome. Okay, next step. These fine drive shafts from Tom Woods Drive Shafts came today. Um, actually, they just live here in town. So it's kind of convenient to get some of the best drive shafts in the world right here local. These beauties are the three most important drive shafts of the four drive shafts in the vehicle. And look at them. That's awesome. Top one is for the front, coming off the transfer case. That long one in the middle, that goes to the rear. That's for the carrier bearing that goes to the rear drive axle. And then that bottom one there is for the middle axle. And there's the hardware. And then these over here are the stainless steel spacers for spacing out to the skid plate and transmission um, with the, because the new transfer case is a lot bigger and stouter than the old original transfer cases. So now we're gonna go to install. All right, so I've got the front drive shaft in. And what you can see I've done here is that um, each one of my drive shafts have a 1310 joint at the axle and 1350 joints at the transfer case. The reason I did that is because even though I'm running Dana 60 axles in the rear and a Dana 44 up front, if anything's gonna break, it's gonna be the 1310 joint right there. That's what will break. That's my fusible link. So if we're out on the trail and we're putting a lot of pressure and a lot of torque through this, the, if something's going to snap, that's what's going to snap. 1310 joints at the axles are easy to swap out. 
They're inexpensive, uh, much less expensive than a ring and pinion gear or a transfer case, even though I know I'm never going to blow this one apart. This Hero transfer case is pretty much bulletproof. But that's my fusible link. So it's kind of a safety uh, precautionary thing. I carry a bunch of spares in the toolbox and it takes about 20 minutes to swap one out on the trail. Haven't broken too many, but that's my precaution. Okay, there's the Hero transfer case twin outputs for the backside. I've got to hook up the speedometer, got the breather hose, got it filled full of fluid. And you can see I can put a little mark here to see where it's at full. Everything looks good on this side. Now we're going to hook up the rear drive shafts. Okay, this is the middle axle. You can see there's the output or the input for the Dana 60. And there's where the carrier bearing goes. I cut it off from where it was before to remount it to make sure it matches up to this new transfer case. So now I've got to weld it in place. I've got it all measured out and everything straight and aligned with the transfer case. So I will be tacking it in place and then doing a drive shaft check on the middle drive shaft. There's the carrier bearing bolted and welded into place on the middle axle. As you can see, it'll go to the rear axle in the back. Now, time to install some drive shafts. All right, both rear, I mean, middle drive shafts are now installed on the transfer case. Just got to rotate the axle so I can get the universal joint lined up with the yoke. All right, this is the rearmost shot of the drivetrain. You can see the two drive shafts coming out of the transfer case. One goes to the front Dana 60, one goes to the carrier bearing, and then of course the last drive shaft coming back to the uh, rear axle. Just like the World War II Dodge Power Wagons were set up. They were set up with a transfer case, then a pillow block, in other words, basically another transfer case. And then it uh, had two shafts going back to the middle axle with the carrier bearing on the shoulder of the middle axle, and then the drive shafts going back to the last axle, the 60. Here's a side view of the two drive shafts coming back from the Trailworthy Fab Hero transfer case and going back to the back axle. So now that I have longer shafts, I should be able to get more articulation out of this middle axle. The problem was before with the dual transfer case setup, I had a very short shaft in the middle. It was only 13 inches long. So I had to put a limiting strap on this axle so it couldn't articulate as much as we had hoped, these airbags will drop over 20 inches. So total, uh, total compression and travel of the airbags is almost 26 inches. So that's a lot of articulation possibility. Um, but now we should be able to get more articulation than we had before. All right, now we're going to put on the transmission mount. We got our spacers, our stainless steel spacers, and our nut grade eight bolts, and it's going right up into there. Now we're cut, uh, cutting out and altering the skid plate so that the new transfer case will fit because it's much larger, and also the drive shafts. It's got that CD joint right there, so we've got to make a notch when this thing articulates. We don't want it hitting the skid plate, so that's what we're doing right now. Altered skid plate is in with spacers. Transmission transfer case sit in there just nicely. Install of all the drive shafts is complete. And we've got the skid plate on with the spacers. There's the trailworthy fab transfer case. Hooked up. Let's give it a test drive. 
All right, we just took the zombie killer out for its first test drive with the new Trailworthy Fab Hero two-speed transfer case, and it drove very smooth, very smooth indeed. And when we were driving along though, as you know, now this new setup is that when we're in two-wheel drive, the middle axle is the one that's powered, and the rear and the front are in neutral. When we shift it into six-wheel drive, it then locks the front wheels, and the rear most, and the middle, so then it's true six-wheel drive, has Detroit lockers in the back, and we have a Eaton e-locker up front, and then it's uh, very easy to shift it back into two-wheel drive, or middle-wheel drive, when you're out on the street. This morning we're testing out the articulation, just jacking up that little axle off the ground. See another droop in the back. The nice thing is these drive shafts are all still nicely aligned. So we're not going to be binding any more drive shafts. So we lift up the back. Saw that articulation. Looks really good. There's a line. Of course, since it's a pan hard barred system or four link, when it does get shoved up, it does tend to rock slightly that way. But that's okay, everything seems to be all right. Nothing's binding, nothing's twisting up. Looks good. Of course, I got the airbags in the back, stretching out. 